After a troubled first week of pre-season testing for Mercedes, signs of an immediate reaction as the second and final pre-season test gets underway in Barcelona. A new package of updates to their car in an effort to get on top of the handling problems that blighted the first week and attempt to close the gap to Ferrari at the front of the field. I'm joined by our technical editor, Jake Boxleg, to talk us through the various updates on the Mercedes car. JBL, we've just come back from the track and it's quite a big set, so let's start with the most obvious change at the front of the car and the front wing. Talk us through it. Absolutely. So, uh, as you said, they're trying to dial out some of the handling issues that they've had and that has involved a change to the nose and ch change to the end plates as well. So looking at this imagery produced by Giorgio Piola, uh, the end plates previously looked like this in that the trailing edge curled inwards and this kind of worked in tandem with the flap adjuster here and now it looked quite curious it looked like it was in washing airflow which is seems to be counterproductive to what teams want to do but it seemed to be working in tandem with this flap adjuster to sort of compress the vortex that's produced at the end and send it around the front tires but the thing is it's just not seemed to have come off for them and they've looked at all of the other teams and they've come with that out washing end plates and so in time for this second week of testing, Mercedes has come up with their own solution of an outwashing end plate, kind of like probably how it should be really. Um, and as you can see, there's a little cutout section in the trailing edge here. So what happens is a vortex is usually produced on this top edge and it rolls downwards. This can be taken all of the way along, but they've decided to try and stop the creation of it here and then use the flow from the wing to spill over and help guide it around the front of the tire. So it kind of suggests that the team wasn't able to get the right amount of downforce from the front wing further down the car and it also suggests that again there are handling issues uh, as well and this is also a change in the nose to assist with that as well. Yeah we have these new indents, if you like, on the on the nose of the Mercedes. What's the significance of, of that development? So yes, yeah, so um, this is to also help improve front end downforce as well, because it now gives the airflow a chance to spill over and onto the top of the caped section that lives here, essentially. And so what that does is it helps create a lower pressure zone under the nose, and the high pressure air on top of the nose kind of wants to gravitate towards it, and it pushes the nose down, and therefore you're getting just a greater amount of force towards the front end into the floor. And yeah, that's where you get your front end downforce from. We all know that aerodynamic changes at the front of a car create knock-on effects downstream, and that's certainly the case with the Mercedes. So talk us through some of the other updates they've had to bring as a consequence of this front wing change. Well, there's been quite a few changes. I think somebody has remarked that it was about 1,500 new parts to the car wow. between the two tests. And there are three little fins down here on the bottom of the floor. This is just to help further that outwash production and guide it around the rear tires a little bit more. There's a slot in the floor here, and that's just assisting with bringing air around and also helping to seal it a little bit more as well, just to get a bit more performance out of the diffuser. And also, if you look at the side pod as well, there's a little bit more of a, an indent here. It was a very sculpted design. So if we look at this image from test one, it looks like a very conventional side pod. It has a pretty solid undercut there and the it sweeps along here but Mercedes has decided to redefine it a little bit with more in line with what they used last year and now what happens is you've got airflow coming through here and it's being driven down this direction here you can see along the light marks here just how they've reshaped that and that's just to send a little bit more airflow down towards the floor and then that's essentially creating a high pressure zone on top of the floor around the diffuser area and then that's giving them the chance to work the diffuser a little bit harder because the pressure differential between above and below is greater. And so they're getting a little bit more rear end downforce out of it. Yeah, you mentioned rear downforce and Mercedes has also been playing around with elements in front of the rear wing. So talk us through that change. Yep, so now they've got a double stacked T-wing. This was something that we saw when T-wings were positioned higher up with the shark fin. Uh, this has been changed, but Mercedes has decided to try and bring that back a little bit. I guess Ferrari have been using it earlier in the in the week to great effect. Mercedes have tried to get in on the game as well. So the idea of this is to just try and double up. It's only creating a tiny amount of downforce because the cord is so short. But it's Every little helps, right? Yeah, definitely. And it's also cleaning up some of the airflow before it gets to the rear wing. But also there's these overhanging straight sections as well. And you would look at Ferraris and it looks a little bit more like a coat hanger. And you think, what's the significance of that? you get a vortex from the bottom of that, that's a tip vortex that rolls up along the inside, and then that's sent further 
just basically just to the underside of the wing. And that helps improve the suction a little bit because it's creating a lot more of a low pressure zone. And so essentially that's just helping work the rear wing a little bit more. It looks like Mercedes have gone away from test one, done a lot of homework, produced a lot of intricate parts in pursuit of more downforce. When you take this package as a whole, do you think that it's a potential change of concept? Total Wolf said it would take months to change the aero concept, or do you think this is just to further the refinement and development of their existing concept and they're continuing to go pretty much the same way as they did for test one, but just with more refinement? It's trying to bring the concept that they have more in line with what perhaps they're seeing around them. I don't think it's too much of a reactive change almost because the lead time on these components is, it's not long, but it's you know longer than a week, you would have to say, to get them all in line. So it's something that they've probably been getting together for the last couple of weeks. Um, so whether that instigates a, a full change later down the season, whether they'll come with like a B-spec car or something, if this still isn't working to their taste, we don't know. Uh, or maybe they're just trialling some new bits out and just seeing what works best. It's The jury's still out on that at the moment, but it's very, very interesting to see so many new additions at this early stage.